There is a feeling you get when you finish a great piece of entertainment. You have been an observer to these characters' lives, their struggles, their triumphs, their dreams, all that. So much so that you forget for a moment that they are, in fact, fictional characters. Despite being only drawings on the screen, they feel real. Like these characters are more than that. That they're people. That you have lived their lives along with them. And while the final credits of that final episode play, you want more. You don't want your time with these characters, these people, these friends to end. And that's how I felt after finishing season two of March Comes In Like a Lion. And as I make this review, that's how I feel. Just watching some of these openings and endings in the songs that tell these stories. Both seasons of the show were such an experience. My favorite slice of life ever. And don't be turned off by me calling it a slice of life. Oh no. It is so much more than any other slice of life I have seen. It's a story about the struggles of life, finding your way, and most importantly, finding a place to belong. So what is it all about? Well, it's about a young professional shogi player named Ray and his journey through life. Ray is very much a loner. He pushes people away from him from his adoptive family to his fellow classmates, and anyone he can get away from, he does. But he meets a kind family that sort of takes him in, and through the kindness of those around him, he's able to overcome the emotional scars of his past. Though in the second season, the story shifts a bit, showing how now Ray is able to help those around him. There's a lot to like about this show, which I will definitely get into. That's why I'm making this video. But before that, I want to go over a couple of the things I disliked. These aren't even all that bad, and a lot of it stems from my general dislike of Slice of Life, but I still feel they're worth saying, at least so you understand my perspective. At the start of the show, there are a lot of parts that honestly bored me. While I did like Ray and the Kawamoto sisters from the beginning, the other characters, not so much. There are times like Ninkaido, who I just found annoying. Though, this is justified, at least somewhat, since that's the same feeling that Ray had. He found Ninkaido annoying. He doesn't want to deal with these other people. He wants to just yell at them to leave him alone. Kind of like how I wanted to yell at these characters to get out of the story because I don't care about them. What's interesting, though, is this type of thing happened a lot about the show. There's something I don't like about it, or I just find it boring. But then they have some sort of twist that justifies it, where I can see what they were doing and how it fits. Another good example of this is there are a couple shogi matches near the middle of the first season, where there's a lot of time spent focusing on Ray's opponents and trying to make us kind of feel sorry for them despite them not deserving it and just being minor characters. I didn't care about them, and this part just felt pointless. But then after the matches, Ray ends up yelling it to no one about how he should not feel sorry for them, how anything bad that happens is not his fault, how they should have practiced more, played better, and all that. And this is how I was feeling too. So I loved how this connected so well with how I felt. The other issue I had with the show were the shogi matches themselves. A lot of them were shown in a way that was so abstract and high level that it felt like they were just making things up, and it didn't have the type of tension I want from anime about games or sports. Season 2 did fix that with the matches being much more about the characters than the moves being made, which I liked. Though I will say one small issue I had is there's one match where the characters made a move and then they described that move. However, that move was impossible, something I could tell from my very limited knowledge of shogi. Then maybe the subtitles were just strong there. Either way. These two things combined to make it so there are a lot of parts of season one I didn't like, like the matches between Shimoda and Soya. The episodes took the focus off of Rei and while Shimoda is an okay character, he felt rather dull here. Between that and Shogi itself not being that interesting, these episodes were pretty flat. I, in fact, I even thought about making a video talking about how the show was the greatest show that I ever dropped. But I did keep going and, well, I'm making this video and, well, I like it quite a lot. Still, these parts of season one, some of them did have a worthwhile payoff, but parts I just don't feel it was worthwhile. Alright, so minor complaints aside, let's talk about the good because that is why I made this review. Why would I waste so much time on a video that wasn't good? It's not even not good in a fun way to talk about. So, the first standout thing to talk about here, and really 
everything else that the show builds upon is Ray's character. He is messed up mentally, likely dealing with depression or anxiety, though it's never explicitly stated, it's definitely implied to some degree. He isolates himself, and while he is a kind person who subconsciously wants to be loved, he's been hurt so much in the past that he just pushes away people from him. He commits himself to Shogi, to studying it because that's something he can do, though he wants something more. What I love about him is how slow his growth is. It is spurred on by the kindness of others around him, but it still takes time. I can see a lot of myself in Ray too, and that's why I was so drawn to his character. No, I'm not someone who has lost multiple families and has so many tragic scars, but there are many times I can relate to him, his feelings, his actions, and I think a lot of the reason that I was so drawn to the show is Ray's character. He's my favorite character in the entire show. The other big highlights character-wise for the show were the Kamoto family. Akari, the oldest of the three sisters, is the one who brings Rei into their family, wanting to help them out. She is such a kind strength around her, being like a mother to her two younger sisters after their biological mother passed away. She's the one who instinctively looks after strays, whether they are cats, or people, in Ray's case. But despite her strength, there's a lot of sadness hidden beneath. Her kindness is so inspiring, how she works so hard to raise her family, and there is so much good that happens because of her, either directly or indirectly. The youngest sister, Momo, fits the role of a cute kid well, and she doesn't get a lot of focus. It's enough for her role in the story. I also like the grandpa, uh, Someji, quite a bit. While he is somewhat distant at times, it's obvious he loves his grandchildren, and Ray as well. But my favorite character of the family is Hina. There is a great blend of strength and vulnerability with her that makes her a wonderful character. While Akari is the one who brings Ray into their family, it is Hina that really saves him. The way they portray Hina in the first season just really made me like her. And then in season two, she gets a lot more focus. Even her own character arc, which is just... It was incredible. Sometimes when characters are faced with struggles like Hina in the second season, it feels like the show is being emotionally manipulative. That they have a character that they need you to care about so they have bad things happen to them. But in Hina's case, I cared about her a lot in season one. So when the events happened in season two, they were just so incredibly powerful. And during that part, the relationship between Rei and Hina is so good. Rei wants to help, but has no idea how. He sees the parallels in his own life, and while he doesn't care about himself, he doesn't want Hina to face this pain. Once it's resolved, Rei looks back and feels that he didn't do anything to help, which, in the end, it's kind of true. The big resolution did not come from him. But still, he gave Hina the strength, and I just love this. Through this arc, we see Hina's strength on full display, and she has so many great moments to shine. Actually, you know what? I take back what I said about Rey being my favorite character. It's Hina. Another one of the things that makes this show stand out is its structure. It's a slice of life in how it shows the different parts of Rey's life. But a lot of slice of life anime focus only on one aspect of these characters' lives. Like Kaon, it's the music club. With comic girls, it's the making manga. And while, yes, these are good shows, a lot of times it feels like we're missing part of their lives. Like most sports and game anime have 90% of the show focused on them playing the sport. But in this anime's case, you have Ray's life as a shogi player, but you also have his struggles with his adoptive family, his interactions with Akari and her family, his time at school and all that, which made it feel much more real. Ray is so much more as a person than just a shogi player, and the anime shows that. We also have the shogi parts interspersed with the others because for Ray, that's his job. He can't just put it on hold, he has to go play matches. Even when there are things going on with the other characters that he wants to do more with. And that's how life works. A job doesn't just stop when something else is going on. One of the most fascinating aspects of the show is how the professional shogi players are portrayed. How their skill at shogi is shown not necessarily to be a good thing, or it's oftentimes a product of bad things happening in their life. For example, Ray is good at Shogi because he spent so much time alone studying it and is going to high school with the intention of quitting Shogi by getting a degree so he can get a better job. And a lot of the other characters have similar backgrounds, a tragic underpinning to their life as a Shogi player. 
I also have to talk about the visuals for the show because they are absolutely stunning. The style here is incredible with each scene being done in the perfect way to bring out the right tone and emotion. There's a lot of symbolic storytelling with this show too and that adds to it so much. Even when there's little physical movement going on, the show fully utilizes everything it can visually to tell the story. This, I am going to just say it, this is the best looking anime in all of anime. Sure, you might have other shows with more fluid animation or more detailed fights or whatever, but when it comes to using the visuals to tell a story, nothing is as good as this one. I could make a whole video talking about it, breaking down some of the scenes. In fact, I will do that next weekend. Why am I promising that when I haven't even started scripting it? But it's going to happen anyway. I also want to talk for a moment about the dub for the show. The English dub for this anime is so great. All the characters are voiced perfectly for who they are. Sadly though, the first season is the only one that has been dubbed, and the second season hasn't. But when I switched to the subtitled version, I was not missing anything. It's weird. Like... Both versions, both languages are so great that I can't really recommend one over the other, so good job to all the voice actors. And now I want to talk about the openings and endings because they're so amazing. The first ending specifically shows Ray's struggle so well, being overwhelmed by the waves, and then struggling but making the way to those who saved him. And then he looks back at his younger self. This is the ending for the first half of the first season, but they brought the song back for the final episode of the first season, which anime does that a lot. But this time, Crunchyroll also translated the lyrics, which gave the song so much more power. And by me understanding the lyrics as they are being played, it's like how I understand the meaning that Ray now understands as well. His life became so much brighter due to all those around him. And yes, this is a bit of a coincidence how Crunchyroll did things, but it was still a neat effect. I also love opening three, the first one for season two. It is filled with so many bright colors and so much joy and happiness that Ray is now feeling. And then the lyrics too. I, I wish I could find a really good cover of this song because songs have so much more power when I can understand the lyrics and they're in my language. But just looking at the translations of it, I get it. The story of Ray and Hina and everything there. It is an incredible song. Let me know if there are good covers that you'd like of any of the openings or endings because I really want to watch them. And I sadly have not found any that really are as good as I would like. Though maybe I just have very high standards when it comes to anime covers. Regardless. Back, on to back to my script. I also love the message of the show. How kindness can change a life. How we can inspire others through the things we think are ordinary. How a little bit of courage can make a big difference. How sometimes love requires something crazy to make a difference in someone else's life. In fact, this show pushed me to reach out to a friend who was struggling, knowing that I can't do much, but I should do what little I can. This show is all about making the most of the good times we have with those around us, because one day, those times will be gone. But even while they might be gone, their actions and the impact remain. The show ends by reflecting how they are all children of Marchtown, no matter where they go, which is true. The time the characters spend together changed them for the better, and while they may never meet again, or life may change a lot, where they came from will never change. And speaking of the ending, I want more. The show did wrap pretty much everything up as well as it could have, so that is not my complaint. Yeah, there are a couple loose ends, but a solid ending overall. But I like these characters so much, and I like the show so much, I want to see more. The manga keeps going too, and after learning a little bit about that, I want to see that animated. There's enough for at least one more season, so Shaft, go do that. I will pay you money to do that. I should probably buy the first two seasons because I like them so much. I will go f look for them on Amazon after recording this. Oh, and a little tidbit. Apparently, the manga that this runs in is also the same one as Berserk. I could say things here, but I won't. The final thing I want to talk about, though, is how much I can see my own life reflected in the story within this anime. Especially with the friends that Ray makes throughout it. How they're like people in my own life, such as families not my own. A good distance away from me, but they still welcome me as if I am one of them. Or a friend who may sometimes be overly loud and outgoing. But I love him and how he is able to just connect with me and make me feel valued. Or like those I work with who have seen many more things and can teach me from what they have learned. Or like my hobbies with YouTube. 
how I've met other YouTubers and have learned so much from them as I become friends with them, or just many others I've interacted with. As I said at the end of the anime, they reflect on how they are children of Marchtown, how no matter where they go, that will never change. And no matter what happens with me or YouTube or my friends, while we may grow apart, things might change. I will still always be the person I am because of them. So yeah, this anime is amazing. One of the best I've ever seen. If I, who am not a fan of Slice of Life, enjoy it so much, it has to do something right. So I give it a final score of an 8.5 out of 10 and a rating of Masterpiece. So I hope with this review, you understand why it became my top anime of 2018. And I will see you all next time with a video about, I don't know. Talk to you then.